Welcome back students. This is all about independent samples to test. We're going to do an example on how to do this. So our first example, we want to see do males or females spend more money while shopping at Colorado Mills? That's mall for those of you who don't live in the Denver metro. So we took a sample of 50 guys and 50 girls and just said, hey, how much did you spend? Based on that sample, I calculated a mean for guys, a mean for girls, and standard deviation. So we have some questions that we're going to start with. And we're going to use the exact same process that we did. Come on, there we go. That we did with the one sample tests. So the research question is two groups, male and female, and is there a difference between those two groups? So our null hypothesis is that the two groups are equal. So the male and the female groups, there's no difference between them. The alternative, we didn't have a question. So going back, we're not saying are they just different. We have this word more, in which case the females are higher. So we have a directional hypothesis. So we are going to say that females are larger, spend more money, sorry, than males. Confidence level, this is not high stakes, so let's do 95%, which leaves us an alpha of 0 0.05. All right, what test are we gonna use? So we have a lot of examples of tests that we can use. So our first decision is one sample or two samples. So a one sample would be one group compared to the population. That's not the case here. We have two groups, two samples, males and females. These groups are separate. So you are either a male or you are a female. You only get to be in one group. So it's an independent sample t-test. So now we have to decide which one do we use. And this has to do with this F-test. So we're going to go back up here. And I just listed out all the information that the problem gave us. Step one, it's tedious. It feels awkward. But list everything that the problem gives you. What do those numbers mean? So we have x bar for males, x bar for females, standard deviation for males and females. I squared those, so we now have variance. And we had 50 for each group. So our first decision is the F test. So we are going to take the variance of the larger group, so just whichever one is larger, we're gonna put that on top, and we're going to divide by the smaller variance. In this case, we're going to take 62.41 divided by 22.09, and our F test is 2.82. So we now need to see, is this significant? So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to open up a new site, and I'm going to say F value to P value. If it let me, I'm going to scroll down. I like easy calculator, but you can use any of them. It's all the same concept. All right, so my F value was 2.82. Then I have numerator and denominator degrees of freedom. So I'm going to go back up here. And which one did I put on top? That was female. So my degrees freedom for the numerator, the one on top, is n minus 1. The degrees freedom for the one on the bottom is also n minus 1. So in this case, it's both 49. So I'm going to go back up here. My degrees freedom is 49. And 49, calculate, and my probability is 0 0.00002. P equals 0.0002. So 0 0.0002 is less than my alpha of 0 0.05, meaning this is significant. 
So let's go back to my picture. If F is significant, I'm going to use the Moore's t-test. So we go back up here and we figure out that we're going to use this here. So all you're going to do is plug in all of the values right through here and solve for t. So pause the video and I want you to solve for t. I'm serious. Pause, plug it in, and we'll come back. All right, so we know that we're using independent sample t test, and we now know that we are going to use Moore's t. When we calculate that value, we get negative 10.3. So our t-test is 10.3. Degrees freedom we will need as well. And degrees freedom for a Moore's test is n minus 1 for whichever group is smaller. So same sample. So our degrees freedom is 49, and we're good. So I need to change t to a p-value. So I'm going to go back to my t-test calculator. Again, if you Google t-test to p-value, there's a bunch of different calculators. They're all the same. So negative 10.3. My degrees freedom is 49. I'm going to keep um, a 0.05. This is actually one-tailed because we want to see your females higher than males. So it's one tail, not two, directional. I hit calculate. And my p-value is very, very, very small. So my p-value in this case is less than 0 0.001. All right, so all that work to get to that final p-value. So now I have to make a decision. So I'm going to go back up and I'm going to compare it to alpha. My alpha is 0 0.05. My p-value here for this t-test is much less than my alpha. So the result is significant, meaning I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. That means there is a difference between the two groups, and females are, in fact, higher, meaning we spend more money than you guys. Since we rejected the null, it is possible that we made a type 1 error. All right, so this process is the exact same for all of the problems that you are going to do. It's just going through and figuring out which t-test you use. And all of that is based on this f-test. So all the f-test is doing is telling us homogeneity of variance, which leads to which t-test do we use Moore's or pooled, and then that leads us all the way back to here, and then we make our decisions. Process is the exact same. To continue practicing, I highly recommend this website right here. It gives you very similar questions to how we've been going through this. It asks you for a t-crit. We're using p-values instead of a t-crit, just FYI. Oh, and awesome, it gives you all of the answers along with that, and then you can go back. So spend some time and practice independent sample t-tests.